Prepare yourself for a journey to wisdom, wellness, and wonder through Greek philosophy. Whatever your hopes and dreams may be, you will emerge from this guided meditation much more comfortable and much more confident than before. It will all seem effortless to you. Now prepare yourself. Arrange your clothes. Make sure your other devices are turned off so that we will have no disturbances during this guided meditation. Your hands should be to the side of your body with the palms facing upwards. At the end of this video, please like, comment, share it with your friends and make sure you're subscribed to this channel. If you'd like to listen to today's session without any advertisement interruptions, head on over to patreon.com. You can go ahead and close your eyes if you feel more comfortable. Now let's begin by taking a deep breath together, inhaling through the nose, holding that breath and spreading it throughout your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And only when you've spread the oxygen in your body can you then Exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale deeply, deeply, deeply. Relaxing your facial muscles. Relaxing your shoulders. Spreading the oxygen to all the cells of your body. And exhaling through the mouth with double the time so that really you empty out any stress. Once again, a deep, deep inhalation, relaxing your jaw in particular by dropping your mouth open, spreading the oxygen throughout your whole body, relaxing your shoulders, and again, exhaling double the time so that you feel deeply, deeply relaxed. Observe your abdomen, your stomach area, as it's rising and falling with every breath you take. Observe how it inflates like a balloon every time you're inhaling and how it deflates every time you exhale. Allow yourself to breathe naturally, relaxing and being comfortable with every breath you take. Inhaling and exhaling. Your shoulders are relaxing. Your whole right arm is relaxing. 
your whole left arm is relaxing. The abdomen area is relaxing. Your genital area is relaxing. Your whole left leg is relaxing. Your whole right leg is relaxing. You feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper as you feel your whole body relaxing. Today we will discuss the reserve clause of the Stoics. The Stoics have a caveat, a warning to themselves whenever they engage in any enterprise. They say to themselves that they will try their best to achieve this set goal, but they also recognize that there are certain things they can't control. So they add this little phrase at the end of their sentence and they say, if nothing prevents me, or as some people would say, God willing. So. This is a Stoic strategy to remain in equanimity and tranquility even if things don't turn out the way they would have liked them to go. This will help us to accept outcomes of our actions exactly as they are and not as we would wish them to be. Seneca, for example, had said a famous quote. He would say, I will sail across the ocean if nothing prevents me. He actually had a specific formula, a note to himself, and it went something like this. I want to do such and such an enterprise as long as nothing happens which may present an obstacle to my decision. I'm going to do this if fate will have it, in other words. I'll do my best, but the outcome is ultimately not within your control. I can't be absolutely certain that this outcome will go as planned. You're getting the idea. So it's all about a note to oneself. Because as we know, life is what happens to you while you're busy making plans. So as you set out to do something with this attitude that the outcome is not actually 100% within your control, and if you're willing to calmly accept things that may turn out to be not as you planned, you will gain more confidence in yourself. You see, other people, the type that assume that of course things will go their way, and of course they can control the universe with their mind and their thoughts and the law of attraction those types of people will be disappointed ultimately, disillusioned by reality as reality does exactly what it wants to do. As Stoics, we use the reserve clause in everything we do as we foresee that some things go our way and other things don't. There are things within our control, and there are things that we can't control. We don't promise success to ourselves beforehand. 
we simply promise ourselves that we will do our absolute best. We will use all our inner resources. We will mobilize everything and everyone. And that's all we can actually do. All right. Nobody is a magician. Although certainly many people follow a magical way of thinking, reality ultimately faces them. With this approach of the Stoics, you will also be able to face reality much more calmly, with less drama when things don't go your way, with less complaining and with less victimization. You will simply do your very best, your 100% and more. But simultaneously, you will also know and accept that the outcome is beyond your control. This is a powerful way of thinking. When you sustain the desire for a goal and an outcome, but at the same time, you're also free of its manifestation. Interestingly enough, it often comes to you more powerfully. Let's take an example. You are attracted to someone. You do your full capacity to attract this person, to make them fall in love with you. Now, on the inside, if you're also free, free of that outcome, you will be even more attractive than someone who is totally clingy and needy uh, or forceful. Res having that reserve clause within you, maintaining that part of you that says, you know, I want it, I want you, I want this outcome, I will do my utmost, but there's also a part of me that's free of the outcome. This simply gives you an air of confidence and inner peace that actually help you to think clearer and, if you like, more attract that thing rather than forcing yourself upon it. It's a very delicate balance because at once you're really putting in your full capacity, moving all of your resources towards the realization of a goal, but also having that inner freedom. Why? Because the stoic and the wise person in general will never attach their full happiness on external outcomes and circumstances. They will always look inwards for true fulfillment. You know that happiness is a choice away. And whether or not you win the race in the end remains to be seen whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing. Because again, philosophically speaking, when you pull away and you look at things from a distance, you will see that many of the things that you really wanted dearly, when you got them, sometimes they turn into something negative. And things that you thought were negative turned out to be a blessing. So the Stoic is generally reserved from jumping to conclusions about what is good and what is bad. So naturally, uh, the Stoic is inwardly free of their goals because they know that when you get what you want, it can also be a negative thing. Success 
in something also brings with it a whole load of more responsibilities or more traps for the ego. And unless it is handled with equanimity and wisdom, success will come and bite you. It can destroy you. It can be the worst thing. And you may long for a time before your success. So in this air of self-reflection and realizing the relativity of things, you are more able to keep that inner peace, inner calm, and enjoy your life. So during the week ahead, I encourage you to look at the places that you are disappointed and disillusioned in your life. The reason that you are disillusioned is because the illusion is gone. The illusion that that thing that you wanted will bring you success and happiness and will be the answer to all your desires. I invite you this week to plan for your future. Make actual plans. Make actual strategies. Plot your course. But at the same time, I want you to observe your thinking as you are making these plans. And make sure that you are adding in this reservation clause if you believe that it can help you. While you're making plans for your future, make also contingency plans, auxiliary plans for if things don't go exactly as you want them to go. What will be your plan B? Most of all, what is your real plan for happiness and fulfillment? A plan that is independent of the way things are going on the outside so that you can be free no matter what is going on on the outside. Now is a good time to repeat your deep affirmation three times, your life mission and purpose. No matter what happens in your life, this will become a reality. And now, on the count of three, you're going to return to full open awareness, returning to your ordinary life. One, take a deep breath, expanding your shoulders, expanding your arms over your head like you do early in the morning, stretching yourself. Two, take another deep breath and move your body stretching from side to side. Three, extend to the tips of your toes and the tips of your fingers, stretching your whole body, feeling revitalized, you're feeling confident, you're feeling powerful and certain of yourself. And as you're returning to full awareness, 
Simply stretch your neck from side to side, relaxing your shoulders and opening your eyes if you've had them closed up until now. You look around and you see that the environment hasn't changed, but deep in yourself you know that you have experienced a deep transformation. The reality may look the same, but you have changed, and that changes everything. That will attract the most positive energy. No matter what happens, you know that you are able to handle things from a place of inner strength and confidence. Thank you for joining me in this guided meditation. I look forward to seeing you next time. Once again, thank you for supporting my work on Patreon.com.